Hey, what is going on guys? This is the Help and Help is Well channel and in this video, I want to quickly run over and share 7 powerful functional strength and training manual that you guys can learn to get a healthier life and this is something that I find you know, people kind of want to know more about based on my local clients that I've dealt with and this is something that's pretty interesting so in today's topic, I have come up with this PowerPoint size presentation with 7 powerful functional strength training manual that I believe that you guys can find tremendous value Value from and you guys can for you know beneficial reasons and health reasons be you know able to apply and get healthy today right so without further ado let's get started so the first introduction is what is functional training is pretty straightforward it's a way to exercise where everything you do in the workout mimics the move of daily activities and the point is to achieve a fitter body by improving the ability to perform everyday activities which is again usable and I guess excuse me applicable if I may for groups ages of all kind and this is something that you guys can do it at a couple at your home as well now what are the benefits for functional fitness it's basically related to improving your functionality as I mentioned earlier and this workout don't aim to enlarge your muscles so if you guys want to go to the, uh, hit a gym hit a bars get a bigger muscle tone this is not really the uh, video for it but I uh, there will be more of such content in the future but this is aiming to make your body function better so if you guys want to move faster, less rigid you know there's more than just stretching and I'm going to talk more about it in a short while now this pressure applies to your muscles become less of a burden and your overall active performance improves and so let's talk about the first exercise with squats alright so there are three types of squats that I want to talk about but let's talk about why squats right so the first time, the first uh, I guess basic definition, excuse me, is to help you strengthen your thigh, knees, and brace your ankle, feet, and balance. This move is standard and practiced in most workouts. That's true. And when it comes to weightlifting, most weightlifters have started pose of a squat, and a squat can also help strengthen your core since it compresses in this position, which I'll talk about in three different uh, exercises. All right. So. <clears throat> the first exercise, jump squat. So in this move, you jump onto a block lay in front of you. So I want you guys to visualize with me if possible. You start off this move by squatting and then lifting off the floor. Once you have jumped onto the block, you squat, hop off. And this is done with best when you do it rep repetitively, right? So however, do consider this a high impact exercise. So if you feel that like you can't try this, try only jumping from the block to the floor back without the squat, right? You only try this move when you're fully capable of doing a squat and you are just jumping off the block to the floor and back. So do take extra caution. Next is going to be a side turn squat. So with this squat, as you go down, turn to the left or right at the 90 degree and turn so your whole core is shifted in one direction. This is something that you guys have to uh, do with uh, ample practice and it really burns at the core when you guys have, are doing it. That's when you know you're doing it right. So this squat helps strengthen your core while turning this move also can be relatively high impact if you are starting out if you can't turn the whole way then don't strain yourself turn it as far as you can and once you feel a burn in both your waist and side again that's where you know the move is working all right so that's how you guys can identify as well to intensify this move you guys can add weights by holding it in your hand and again pumping your arms while you squat this helps to turn the whole body into full body workout so it's a one stone cutable situation you don't have to really just train your, your thighs because you wear all your, your your rear end because of the squats you can do it in the whole body uh, workout manner as well now only attempt this while you're accustomed to the primary version which is what I've explained and basically how squats work in the uh, prior to this uh, intense upgrade if I may now next is going to be this single leg squat so this could, could pose a challenge to some of some of you guys who are just starting out so with this type of squat you need a chair with one leg placed behind you on the chair squat down on your other leg this is a high impact move and it requires you to do well adjusted to doing squats on their own don't try this move unless you are good at both of the formal moves described above the way to make this intense or a full body workout is by throwing in some weights you can also make this harder by including a resistance band behind your foot placed on a chair place it on your own arm and as you go for the squat okay so do take note now let's talk about the benefit again so squats makes your knees and legs stronger when bending down as you grow older your knees will become more vulnerable to the weakness well to it to weakness excuse me and this could be you know something that you guys are already facing or maybe you guys know people who are older than you are facing at the moment so this is why 
you know, Scott is one of the uh, trainings that we would recommend to people when it comes to functionality and making a squat a vital part of your workout helps your knees to keep in their best shape for a longer period, okay? Now let's talk about the second exercise, lunges. So lunges are a common workout move that places in almost every exercise routine. A lunge can scoop you out of the range of your leg motion. The further and longer you can hold a lunge, the better and stronger your legs are. That is very true as well. That is again to let you guys know why we do lunges and I'm gonna explain the benefit in a short while. So here are three exercises that I'll talk about, okay? So it's the pilot lateral launch. So this launch takes you side to side rather than front and back and start off by standing straight and then stretch out one of your legs as far as you can sideways. Again, try to imagine as I explain all these moves to you guys. While doing so, let the other leg bend forward until both of your legs start to feel the stretch behind your thigh. Repeat this action with the other side. This launch is fairly simple. If you feel as though you can't stretch your leg the whole way, then don't, all right? Be safe, always exercise with caution. Go as far as you can, as you can feel a stretch in your muscle. Never push this thing too far, as I mentioned earlier. You could pull something and hurt yourself. So again, do exercise with caution. If not, have a support body with you. Next is the easy launch twist. Now with this move, you will be performing a launch with a slight twist. Once you go now over one leg, turn your body 90 degrees to one side. Alternate the sides, you turn to each with each launch. This helps to strengthen not only your leg, but your core as well. And really our core helps out with a lot of training. So I would usually incorporate uh, training that deals with the core. This move to quite similar to side, side turn squat. Turning while your legs are doing something else. Helps cream torsion and flexibility. This makes for a better workout since more than one body part is being worked on. Okay, now the pilot launch. Now with this move, you're gonna jump each time you alternate your legs. This is a high impact move, so it's better not to do this move when you're just starting out. But it is one of my uh, recommended exercises when you guys are you know more customized to this. Now with this move, it's better not to include your arms as it may risk injuring yourself. Jumping in between each launch is a reckless move. It requires a lot of body control. To do this, it's better if you if your focus, excuse me, isn't divided between your arms and legs. So just do just focus on one part. <coughs> the pilot launch can of course be made easier if you're not ready for this move. Then do a simple launch. That's it. All right. Also try to jump in between every launch every so often. Not while alternating though. Take a break from the launch. Jump for a minute. Then return to this launch. This helps you to prepare for the eventual pilot launch in the future. Now let's talk about the benefits. So it helps with your leg and core, your knee in this is on the ground focal point of this move, but rather your thigh. This, this way you should to feel the burn. That's where things are that this excess are you know are coming to fruition if I may. Nevertheless, lunges do help massively while with maintaining the strength of your knees, while ties are heavily uh, aided as well. And if you notice, lunges are, are simply a more exaggerated version of walking. This exercise helps you while you are on the move making the transition from walking to running easier. Let's talk about the next exercise, stretches, okay? So while considering stretches, you guys can consider it as a yoga move and this also helps you to strengthen your entire body and it's something that you, you want to properly you know, do it yourself, uh, incorporate into your routine. This is really what every coach and fitness coach will tell you, which is stretches. So let's talk about three powerful stretches that I like to do. Number one is the dog, the down weight, downward dog, excuse me. So this pose is the most basic of move and in this pose your feet and hands are flat on the ground and your back is up. So I guess you guys can already envision how it looks. It looks very uh, common. If not, just do a quick search. You can visualize it even better. Now this helps you to stretch all the muscles, loosening them, loosening them up. The downward dog can actually be a starting point for another move. You can add another stretch to this pose. Now the cobra pose is where you strengthen your core muscles and arms. Again, I like to do with the core. It helps you to relax in your legs in this position. So in this pose, start by laying out flat. Lift up your core so that your legs remain flat on the floor while your chest and stomach are lifted. Place your hands flat on the floor while your elbows to bend if they must. Okay. Now another move similar to this is the lynx pose, which is practically the same, only that your arms are flat on the ground, elbows down, and your chest is the only part that's lifted off the ground. Your stomach and legs remain flat. This pose is great for flexibility in your core since hipping it off the floor while the rest of your body stays lowered. It is not a common movement in our daily lives. Last one is going to be the cow pose, right? It sounds funny, but hear me up. So it is something that you guys can start off the tracking session. So this pose is relatively simple, a great way to start your workout. This pose has you on all fours, hands and knees flat on the floor while your back is slightly craned. Now, this pose helps in strengthening your posture while standing 
while you keep this position, your back will naturally try to crane and relax. The goal is not to let that happen and instead keep it as straight as possible. Your arms may feel wobbly after a while and your stomach may churn, but this is a good sign that your, the pose is working. One of the more challenging one, but it's an effective one. Now again, let's talk about the benefits. So it helps you to feel more flexible. It helps you to test the range of all your limbs. It helps you to reach further. This can help you when you make a sudden movement or if you're just resting and if you're sitting in an awkward position that is likely to that you wake up withering with pain in your muscles, in your cramps and whatnot, a little stretching will definitely help to wash that pain away. Now the fourth exercise that I want to recommend is sit-ups. So sit-ups are a classic move and helps the best part of your body and your core. With sit-ups, you can add almost everything. Sit-ups are easy to turn into a full body workout into pieces and let's talk about the three exercises that I recommend. The first one is a sit-up twist, so in this version of a sit-up, rather than lifting yourself up straight, you turn to one side as you go up, start off by lying down with your knees up, place your hands behind your head, lifting yourself from the stomach while keeping your feet grounded to the floor, turn to one side until your elbow touches your knee and then lie back down. Now alternate between sides and repeat this action a couple of times. This move helps in both flexibility and strength, and it will tie you out quickly for sure, but the strength is worth it. So do practice with caution as well because this is an, in a strategy that is going to be a bit tiring, okay? Getting out of bed, picking yourself up and bending up down and turning around will be easy if you heavily practice this move. Next is going to be a sit up with weight. So this version is high intensity and better not to do it if you are a beginner. Again, do have a partner or you know, exercise with caution. Start off with what you were in the ordinary sit up position, back flat on the floor and knee up. With one weight in each hand, lay your arms flat on the floor while lifting yourself up, pull both of your arms inward until you touch your knee and you are sitting upright. Now as you go down, place your arm flat back on the floor. This move requires some coordination and a well-balanced assembly of strength. And another version is to keep the waist by your side the whole time while you sit up. Keep your arms up at 90 degrees and to heighten the strength, excuse me, the strain and pressure on your muscles. To keep that position, this method can be included in the twist version of a sit-up only if you are well acquainted with sit-ups beforehand. <coughs> Last one is going to be the bicycle crunch. So the bicycle crunch is slightly different from a sit-up but it uses the same formula. Now this move is, is you guys start it off by lying flat on the floor, knees up and hands behind your head. First lift your head so that it isn't on the floor, then rise your leg and start pumping them as though you're on a bike. While doing so, Turn your head left to right, keeping off the floor at all times. Turn your position opposite elbow to the opposite knee, making sure that the only part of your body that is touching the floor are your back and your butt. Now again, what are the benefits? So it helps you increase strength, flexibility, and power once you are accustomed to the strength. The repetitive movement works various muscles in every body other than your core and helps to develop functional strength. The slow pace of the movement is also beneficial for improving stamina. Next, let's talk about pulses. So pulses are a type of action implement into other moves to make them more impressive and add more strength to your muscles. So there's three types of exercises that I'll talk about. The first one is going to be arm pulses. And arm pulses can be simple as curling your arm very slightly. What most people do with it is they lift their arms ever so slightly from their elbows, bending nothing else including wrists to make their gra grabs on the weight easier. This improves the overall strength of your arm, biceps and triceps. Now, arm pulses can be found while doing push-ups. The action of repetitive lifting yourself up in the air is an example of pulsing movement. Your arms are quickly and steadily pushing up and down to lift up your torso. Now, let's do it for the legs version, right? So, it this time it involves your legs. So, again, lunges are not a pulse move. With lunges, you take your time to allow the stretch in your muscles to kick in. This is a more quick-paced, action-based exercise. So, for example, Pulsing your leg will be lifting it. A movement you can do is stand on one leg, lift the other rapidly and lightly. Lift your leg so that it is positioned in the right angle at all time and your leg is being lifted from the knee. As you rise your knee, your knee should be at the highest, okay? Now this will create a burning sensation underneath your knee, but that's where you know it is working. Now next is my favorite, core pulses. So pulses aren't that hard to end the routine, but they do intensify the workout by a wholesome amount. A core pulse isn't as easy to put in as leg and arm pulses, but that's not impossible. Now, while doing a sit up run and hoisting yourself all the way to your legs, lift sl yourself slightly so that your core bends, then go back down. Repeat this action as quickly as you can. Turn your sit up into a pulse move. 
this will help you when you get up from lying down or when you have to lift yourself off the floor it also strengthens your core overall that's not what the benefits so it can be applied anywhere in real life when you pick up a heavy object or sleep on something these movements are considered quick to remove excuse me to recover from them or endure them you have to be quick as well so most possible moves are considered power moves since they help you hasten your reaction frame kind of like spider-man dropping out from a top floor and landing on his feet it's, yeah, yeah that is how it is kind of is now the next will be the dumbbell rows so dumbbell rows are great exercises so let's talk about more and uh, more about the exercise okay so single arm dumbbells and alternating dumbbell rows so it, it's quite some explanatory so single arm dumbbell rows again you bend your knee uh it's like it's like bend in your knees bend at the wrist until your torso is at around 30 degree angle to the floor roll dumbbell upwards until it touches on the side of the torso and pause begun hold for two seconds before you lower your arm and repeat it for each set and switch arm okay dumbbell roll is where it's the whole bar the whole thing so staring in the same step as a single arm dumbbell roll this time with holding one dumbbell in each hand so slightly bend your knee and uh and bend forward excuse me make sure to keep your back straight with your arm fully extended contracting the back your arm and pull both dumbbells simultaneously up to your ribcage hold the dumbbell for two seconds and repeat this is a challenging one but it's going to be a fun one next is going to be alternative dumbbell row so with both arms extended forward contract your shoulder and pull only one dumbbell under your wrist inside of the torso hold the position for two seconds and lower your arm as you lower your first arm, pull your other arm to your side, continue alternating in this manner until you complete the set. For a more advanced version, try the single leg dumbbell row with one leg off the floor and the opposite hand performing the row. You can start off by holding the back of a chair and with support with the free hand and then without a chair as you improve your balance. Again, the benefits. So it helps you activate your core, develop a strong back and while rowing the weights up and down, you can also improve the shoulder range of motion, work on your spinal posture at the same time. Now here is our last exercise which is the most common one, push up. It is self explanatory so let's get down to the three powerful and recommended exercises that I will share with you guys today. The first one is going to be the wall push up. So this version is for anyone who cannot manage to push all the way to the floor and it's pretty understandable, nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody gotta start somewhere. So to start off by pushing off the wall is very helpful for reducing the amount of weight that the muscle needs to support. So do this. You know, when you slowly bend your both elbows and lower your upper body towards the wall, hold position for 2 seconds, slowly push yourself back until your arms are once more straight, and then repeat it for 10-12 times per set, okay? Next is going to be the incline push-ups. This is the next step as you build your way up to a standard push-up. With the incline push-up, you guys can get a chance to, be more to get more horizontal by pushing off a table or a chair on your way down. Getting into push-up stand, balance on a chair or a table and push down and then back up. Keeping your back straight throughout the move, knee push up is the last one. And again, this is where you guys can start in the high plank with your shoulder above your wrist and your spine long. Drop your knees on the floor and then start to lower the upper body towards the floor. Push through the palms of the hands to straighten the arm. Once you get comfortable with the knee push up, you can then try to stand the push up by keeping your legs straight and knees off the floor. What are the benefits? So, literally, every major body muscle activates to support your body as you stabilize the movement at the same time it provides an effective stretch to the bicep and back muscle the stretch is not only helpful in improving flexibility but also prevent a preventive against injuries so what are the conclusions so all this functional exercise moves to target specific parts of your body to help strengthen them in their own ways think of it in you know building your body in one go functional fitness develops your body on building blocks until you finally reach a point where your strength is evenly divided okay now understanding functional fitness and why it works is important in order to help yourself progress through your exercise and there are mistakes you can make but imp the impression that you receive from others and expectation you want to achieve and that is the end of this video i hope you guys found value from this functional video implement exercises stay safe and i will catch up with you guys in my next video take care